Good morning to everybody. I'm Emanuele Tessarolo, president of the association Cinque Vie di Milano. Uh, I want to give you a big welcome, a big welcome to the Hong Kong Polytechnic University and um, uh, for this meeting dedicated to the design made in Hong Kong. Uh, we want to thank, uh, really thank Stefano Fossati, director of Istituto Italiano di Cultura di Hong Kong. And uh, now I'm just introducing to you the curator of our meeting, uh, Mrs. Annalisa Rosso. Sorry, I forgot my mute button, as always. Thank you, Emanuele. Thank you very much. Thank you, everybody, for being here with us. We are very happy today um, to having this webinar um, with the aim of building a bridge between uh, the Italian uh, design, the Milanese design and the Hong Kong design. Um, the aim of the entire project is uh, to starting uh, a conversation between uh, the designers uh, from Italy and the future designers from Hong Kong, the students. And uh, so we are glad to um, go deep uh, on this uh, topic that we uh, selected together, the future of interior design, together with Italian designer Federica Biasi. Federica is, uh, in, uh, from my point of view, as a writer and creator, um, she's one of the, of the best uh, uh, examples of the, how the Italian design um, learned recently to be very flexible, to be open, to um, answer to questions that are always changing. We are living now a very peculiar time and the interior design must be able to answer to the specific uh, needs that we have right now. So in this case, uh, in uh, today, Federica will uh, present her work at large, and then we will have another webinar uh, presenting some case history from the Italian design history that you know it's quite uh, uh, relevant in our in our uh, field to present uh, some solutions that uh, maybe in the past changed the things. And that's for the second webinar, while the third one will be open to a discussion. Please don't forget that if you want, you can uh, um, put your questions for Federica or for me at the end of the lesson. Uh, one last thing that I want to underline is that I, ad I especially admire Federica for her capacity of uh, uh, being in relation with uh, many different brands and many different factories. And one of her abilities is to being able to reply, to offer a solution uh, um, to each individual uh, request from the factories. In this case, uh, um, I'm very glad and thankful to work uh, with the Bamboo International Company. And I think that the experience of Federica will be helpful and inspiring even in this case, on how learn to um, have a dialogue with the company that we are working with as, as designers. So thank you, everybody, again, and uh, good uh, enjoy the lesson, everybody, and we'll speak soon in a half an hour, more or less. Thank you. Thank you, Federica. Thank you, you. Thank you to everybody. It's super nice to, to be here connecting Milan with Hong Kong, and I'm so glad for this opportunity. It's a pity that you can see me, that I can see you, but I, I can try to imagine all of you. So um, thanks for, uh, for the introduction, Annalisa, because um, you explained very well uh, part of my work. Because yes, um, I used to do a lot of different kind of, uh, kind of stuff. I set up my studio five years ago, and now my studio is uh, handle a lot of different kind of things like uh, art direction for companies, uh, color consultancy, and in general consultancy and strategy, and most of all product design. So all these kind of three things are connected. And of course, uh, for me, it's one of the best things to do because when this kind of three things are connected, uh, probably a good a good product will come outside. So that's why I'm here to trying to um, to tell you what was my path to arrive here and how how I do this kind of work. So if we can uh, open the presentation.
I hope you can see the presentation. So in, in, in very part of um, little word, I can describe myself. I want to, I want to introduce my path. I'm 31 years old, so here in Italy, I'm quite super young <laughs> designer. But yes, I'm, 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 I'm still young. And I graduated in interior design, actually, in uh, 2011. Uh, so in interior design, but I used to do most of all product design just right now. But I think uh, when I was young, I was a bit confused of how, how to study. And then <laughs> I, I changed my mind after. But yes, interior design, just because I wanted to focus myself on all the old kind of um, interaction and then I want to understand what what was the interior design world. After that I I, I continue and I start to, to, to work in some of um, different kind of agency and studios in Milan focus on interior design most of all and um, shop design. Then when I was when I was in the studio, uh, when I was focused on interior design, I understood that I was more more um, interested in details because I had a, um, my first client was a, was a cosmetic client, um, and I was super curious about all the details of a product. So that's why um, I start to understand that probably I had to change my mind and my path. After that, I I thought, okay, now I need to an experience outside my country because I want to understand more and more about this kind of um, this kind of world and, and this kind of job. So I moved to Amsterdam, and I stayed in Amsterdam for two years. When I was in Amsterdam, I moved to Amsterdam to observe and to understand Nordic uh, uh, design and emerging trends, uh, focus on, focusing on the aesthetic of uh, Nordic design because I was uh, every time uh, so curious about that kind of style just because they were in the north of Europe they have a very strong history of design but actually now um, their design is more light lighter than uh, Italian design because here in Italy we used to design lots of things. We are one of the best country in design, but we had a lot of master in our past, and sometimes we feel the heavy of our master. So that's why I was super curious about the Nordic touch because they they were always super on trend and always fresh. So I wanted to understand very near <laughs> how and how they grow up in this kind of uh, in this kind of field so that's why i moved to amsterdam and i stay uh, i stayed in amsterdam for almost uh, two years yes in these two years i start to collaborate by myself with different kind of companies and then i hired my first job not only in in product design but also in styling shop uh, window styling and then this different kind of stuff but the most important collaboration that I started when I was in Amsterdam uh, was with an Italian, very, very famous Italian company called Fratelli Guzzini. Fratelli Guzzini is one of the, the bigger, the big company about tableware here in Italy and plastic mold. So they are quite historical company. And then I had the, just, just, telling for, just telling you the story, um, I had a friend that um, wanted to introduce me the, in, into this company just to design um, some plate, a graphic for some plate. And it was a race between other kind of uh, graphic and product designer. Um, we were four team and then I, I won the race and they decided to put in production my, my plate, my graphic plate. So that was my first uh, industrial product. Um, talking with, uh, with, with the marketing manager about this kind of project, about this project, um, he was fascinated by my presentation because uh, 
when I design it, something or some graphic, I always put in my presentation why I designed this kind of graphic. And then I wanted to, um, to transmit to the marketing manager why. So I'm not an artist. So if I used to design something, there would be um, a reason. And the reason is always in the marketing and on the trends. And that was, and that's why I was there in the north of Europe to understand how the trends were moving in this kind of years. So uh, he, the marketing manager uh, asked me um, to become a consultant, um, a consultant to for, for them. So I became CMF consultant for them for this company. CMF mean the meaning of CMF is color, material, and finishing. Okay, so um, I used to work with a lot of uh, product in their company. Um, most of all were tableware in plastic and I, I, I start um, to understand more and more and more about um, plastic and mold and that was my first uh, um, experience in, in a real industrial design and I learned more and I learned a lot about it. Uh, after that I, I decided to um, to come in Milan, to come back in Milan, just because it was super hard to, to, to work in a long distance. Probably now it's easier because of this kind of streaming and stuff, but seven or eight years ago, it was a bit different. So, and I needed to see and touch all the products to, to work better with companies and then uh, in, in Amsterdam, everything was beautiful, but here in Milan, there was something in the six years ago, seven years, seven years ago, there was something uh, calling me. So that's why I, I came back in Italy and I set up my own studio, starting from this kind of collaboration. So I had this first collaboration with Fratelli Guccini, and then I stayed here for one year working for them. Every, every year I used to go in all of the design fairs all over the world for them to understand and to study what was the best color, what was the forecasting for the future. So just um, going around to the fair and understand what can be the, the next color or the next finishes or whatever, the next, <laughs> what would be the next. So I started to understand how to forecast design thing and how to suggest to the marketing feed what I understood from the fair because my high is different, of course, from a marketing high because I'm more focused on aesthetic, of course, but I'm in the middle, so I'm focused also on the marketing field. So that's why my work uh, was um, useful for them. And that's why I'm super happy to have this kind of experience at the um, at the start of my uh, of my path because uh, I used to I, I understood a lot of things and a lot of different things inside the company. By the way, um, when I was here in Italy, I start to to collaborate. With, yeah, I continue to collaborate to collaborate with Fratelli Guccini, and then. Uh, one day, another company called me, just telling me, hi, I read um, an article about you and about your work uh, in Fratelli Guzzini, about CMF and how you uh, change the things inside the company. And then he was Daniele Mingardo. Daniele Mingardo, he's the owner of a little Italian company, little car carpenter here in Italy. But a very famous Italian company here in Italy because he used to build a lot of things for Carlo Scarpa in the past. One of the best and the famous architect here in Italy using metal. So um, he asked me, what do you think if you design something for me? And then I answer in one second, 
yes, of course, I can design something for you. You can send me the brief. And then he sent me the brief. And I called him and then I, I told to him, uh, I want I want to design something uh, for you if it's the brief. Because um, I, I remember that I called him and then I said, I'm so sorry, but this brief is totally wrong. You will never, you will never um, sell anything about it, never. So if you want something, I will design something for you, but on my own brief. And if you want, I can, I can write a brief for you and for other designer. It was a bit, um, it was a, a weird conversation. <laughs> Yes, it was, but he suddenly uh, asked me, do you want to become my art director? And then I say, I've never done an art director before. Uh, well, yes, I can. <laughs> so um, in, the last, in the last two years, I was working with a very, very, very big company, such as Fratelli Guzzini. So for me, it was an opportunity, but was a bit easier to work with a little company. Um, so I said, okay, let's start. So it, five years ago, I, I started my path as our director. Uh, yeah, six years ago, five years ago, I don't remember. Uh, as our director of Mingardo. And what I, I've done before um, was to be the strategy for them. I asked to him, uh, what do you need? Actually, do you want to sell more product or do you want to um, do you want to have more press? Do you want to be famous? What do you want? So the, the, the first thing you have to have to accompany, what's your aim? Do you want to, I mean, I don't know, every, every company has a different aim. By the way, everyone has the final aim to sell the product <laughs> in the most of the time. So you have to understand uh, how they want to sell the product. And then after understanding it, you can design something very well for them. So um, I was focused on his aim. And his aim in this case was not to sell <laughs> most of the product, but to um, transmit to the architect how was his know-how in the metal works. So, and his know-how in the metal works was very important because he was very, because he wanted to, he wanted to take, he wanted to, to achieve more, mm, more work in a, more customized work in interior design. So he, he didn't want to sell, he didn't want to sell a lot of product in product design, but he needed a product to transmit to the architect how to customize an interior design. I know it's quite tricky, but yeah, I can enter in, uh, I can see, so I hope you understand. Um, so I beat a strategy for him. I beat the strategy for him in that year, and I, I choose other five designer a part of me to design something. I ask to every designer one thing. For example, I asked my friend and designer Alessandro Stabile, do you want to design a bench for me? And for Mingardo, he said yes. So I sent to him a lot of references because I for the first time of their direction, I wanted to um, transmit one style by every designer. So I choose the style and I, and I send a lot of references to all the designer. In this way, I was sure that all, the, all my first collection called Handicraft um, was super similar, okay? So that was my strategy. And then we, we decided to put all the metal and the brass in all the product, but also to put and to to um, to focus on the know-how of Daniele Mingardo in every product, because our aim, if you remember, <laughs> was to um, 
to attract every architect. Why I'm telling you like a lot of a uh, lot of things like this? Just because I want to I want to um, tell you this this story because design is not always design something. And then I mean I love to design something, but in these years, most of all, in this in these years. You cannot design something without thinking a uh, strategy, without thinking about marketing, or without thinking about everything. Uh, yes, you can, of course, make um, auto-production design, something for yourself, and then in this case, you don't need anything about marketing, you don't need anything about anything. It's quite, could be hard, and I love this kind of design, but, I mean, probably now is not my cup of tea. By the way, if you want to design something for companies, you have to study a lot of things about company that um, exist before your company and the company that sent you the brief. But you have to understand and study a lot of things. We are billion of designer in the world, and only. A spoonful of designer arrive to a company, and if you arrive to the company, you have to have a very, very big idea. And the big idea is not an idea about um, a joint or about a details. Of course, it is, but it's not only this kind of stuff. You have to focus also on what is what there is around the world, what is marketing, and what will be the trend this year and how to predict, how to forecast what will be and what will, will be good in the future and how. <laughs> so it's not easy, but you, you have to study, you have to make a good research and then you have to understand how a good research it is. Because a good research is not to open Pinterest, it's not to open Google. Uh, a good research is uh, it's about open a book, going outside, going around the world, going out your country, of course. I mean, in this moment, it's not easy to go outside your country, but you can take a book, you can study the history of design. But not also, not only design, you have to be um, curious about everything, every time, everything. By the way, um, talking about my past, after after Mingardo, I, I'm I'm still the art director of Mingardo by five years, but this was my first um, my first experience as art director. After that, I used to I used to I, I start to continue to to design product design for other companies because after my first art direction, a lot of companies as um, so my work and then they start to call me to to start new collaboration and then I start to um, to design something to design a lot of products for other companies and I will show you some selected product after that but um, the other very important uh, collaboration that I have uh, it was two years ago because I became our director of uh, another company. And this is a bit more tricky than the first one because this company is bigger and in, is a company um, office oriented for off, furniture office oriented. So it's not easy. And also is a familiar company. So I have to work with I have to work and to talk with all the families. So here in Italy, it's not, a, it's not a, an easy stuff, but yeah. <laughs> so the company is quite big and the, the name is Manerba. I started collaborating with them last years ago, um, one years ago, yes. And then I changed the strategy. It's a different strategy for them because they are uh, quite known, already quite known. So I had to build a, a new strategy, I have to um, call, for example, famous designer. So last year I called Philip Nigro and I didn't design anything for them because I needed to understand the company. So when they called me, I didn't know a lot of things about this kind of company. So 
before design something for them, I wanted to um, to express some my my vision outside. So only as art director, not as designer. So I call Philippe Nigo, that is a very important and famous French designer, and I I asked to Philippe, okay, Philippe, do you want to design something for 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 Manerba? It's a company that I'm following, and he said, I mean. I don't know, but if we do a very good job together, it's okay. Mm, why he told, he asked me a very good job? Because sometimes for us, for designer, it's not important to achieve something or to gain a lot of money, but uh, the important thing is how to express yourself. So if you if a company believe in you and decide to 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 express yourself in a good way, making a very good industrial product and making very good shooting, making very very good catalog and whatever communication for you, for you is is always a win win. So that's why Philip asked me, "Are you sure?" Uh, and then I said, "Yes, I'm sure. I will do a lot of a lot of kind of uh, good things for you, shooting and product and whatever." So we start with this kind of product and, and there was um, a bookcase. This year I designed a lot of things for them that I will show you in in, in some moment. Uh, talking about other other parts, my last collaboration, uh, very important, I think was the best and the most important collaboration in my little 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 part. Last year, Nespresso, you know Nespresso, the coffee, what else? And then <laughs> they called me to propose me a collaboration, and they called me to propose me the collaboration to design the new collection of Nespresso. And of course, it was a race between other five or four designers. It was art, and I won the race, so in one month, uh, in the end of October, we will see the whole uh, collection signed by Studio Biazzi, by me. And then I was really, I am really proud of this collaboration because it, it is the very and the, be, the most uh, industrial product um, on the market. So all over the world. So I, I'm, I'm quite honored to tell you this kind of stuff. <laughs> Here in the presentation, yes, of course, you can see um, on the left the first shooting for uh, for the company in Gardo. and some uh, some of com some companies um, that I work with in the art direction and consultancy. So Nestlé, Nestlé, Nespresso, Imitec, Manerva, Fratelli Guzzini, Mingardo. Here's something about color consultancy. So this is another branch that I used to work with um, for, for, for Fratelli Guzzini here. You can see a collection that I follow for them. Uh, the designer, I, I'm not the designer of this collection, but they design, the designer has designed this collection in without color and transparent. So I used to um, make a concept to, to give to this company a real life <laughs> for the market. So this was my color, my color choosing and my concept for them. And here, all the color that I choose this year for Manerba sofas, so all her colors. But my work is also about, yeah, of course, uh, product design. So, here, my client was product design, and this is the last chair that I designed for Manerba. This is the concept that I thought for them this year. Everything about office design, but um, the title, it was a place to live. So I wanted to uh, arrive to this company with a very strong concept about office design. We know that this year for office is not uh, easy. <laughs> Is here, but fortunately, we thought before something about dividers. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but yeah, 
um, something to divide the space, but staying in all the same space. Here, here in the middle, you can see some dividers. And these kind of dividers were thought exactly during the lockdown here in Italy, just to answer to the needs to some office to divide some space. This is the last, yeah, the last sofa that I designed for Manerba. It is a modular sofa. And here you can see a cover outside. And this cover, you can hide this cover to divide some spaces. And this is also acoustic. You can see here inside there is the sofa. And here you have a panel. This is acoustic panel, but in this period of COVID, we can use it and, and, and the aim will be also to divide the spaces and to stay, to have a meeting inside it and outside it. That's why there is a, a table for, for PD meeting. This is another, uh, another um, last product that I've done this year. And I'm quite, I'm quite happy about this work because uh, we worked almost two years for going outside with this, uh, with this, um, with this armchair, I designed this armchair for Galotti Radice. This is an, an historical Italian company. I'm quite happy about this product because uh, it represents a lot of my my style and a lot of the style of the company. So we uh, we then we had an, a name, <laughs> and our aim in this chair was to represent me as a designer and to represent the company and we are all happy about this product we presented uh, we presented this product three, three weeks ago during during the milan design day here the sketch i used to sketch her every every time something before and then the final product from top view here the chair that I designed for Manerba. For example, I I'm, I'm, I can tell you something about this product. This product, um, the aim of this product was to create a very very cheap <laughs> cheap chair for the contract. When I say contract, I I want to the meaning is hotelery bar, restaurant, and coffee break area in, um, in the offices. So it was not easy to, to, to design something super cheap, but also quite nice and new. <laughs> so um, the design, it's quite, it's quite easy, but uh, and that's why the, co the name of this chair is Easy Chair. <laughs> But um, I'm really happy about this work because we we arrived to the to a very good price, and then a lot of a lot of companies, a lot of uh, offices are asking uh, information about this last work. So I'm I'm happy about it, and that's why I'm telling you this, this kind of stuff because uh, you have to always to focus on your aim, and if you stay on your aim, you will arrive uh, to some companies with, with the product. This is another collaboration about last year in for Coin Casa. Coin Casa is a super huge store here in Italy. We have a lot of uh, it's, it's like a chain, and they they sell a um, lot of different kind of stuff in furniture and tableware and whatever. And I designed for them this kind with this collection about trays and. Um, boxes for, for home this is another product that i've done two years ago it's an outside outdoor chair i don't know how much time we have but yeah we have a lot of time five minutes um for example here the concept was to design something um that if i can put in my outdoor would be okay in my garden. When I say okay, I, I want to say that um, would not disturb my eyes. 
something organic, something that remind me some shape about nature. But of course, um, I didn't want, it's not my style to make something too organic. So um, I wanted, and I have taken, for example, here, the shape, not so rounded, but a bit washy and, 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 and yes, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Sometimes it's super difficult to, to talk without uh, having no one in front of you. This is, um, this is a carpet that I designed three years ago for the company CC Tapi. Here, my concept was to create something, a carpet for meditation in your house. And the name is OM as the universal sound OM. And then when I thought about it, I, I, I thought I want, to, I want to express something very, very um, relaxed. And when I, when I thought uh, something uh, very relaxed, I thought about my, last, my past experience. And then I thought about my, my first night in the Sahara Desert. That's why the color uh, where the Sahara Desert and that's why the blue is this kind of blue because it's the, the, the blue of the Moroccan people they used to, 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 to wear the, the dress, the long dress in this kind of blue. And this color remind me that uh, that night, and also the meditation that we had uh, in this in this night in that night in the desert. In this carpet, you have two pot, two mat, and then you can stay in your home inside your carpet. You can stay lay back and think about anything <laughs> because when you do meditation, you don't think about anything. And I thought uh, I wanted to bring the people in my personal desert, so in my personal um, relaxed. Here, um, a table that I designed two years ago for my home collection. This is one of my first, uh, or probably was my first um, sofas. And I, I quite yeah I'm, I'm, I love this work because I presented uh, during Maison Objet five three years ago and then it was a useful uh, product so I'm, I'm super in love with this product. This is another this is another bookcase that I designed for Mingardo, the second year of the art direction. This is um, a project that was born with uh, um, wallpaper and made three years ago. And this is a, a collection and basis based on uh, traditional and antique uh, vases in, in the antique room. They were all hand blown. Another hunter that I designed it. And um, this is the base that I designed the first year of my art direction for Mingardo. So you can see that the product is really, really simple, but you can see in the product um, the know-how to work with metal uh, in, for Mingardo. So um, I wanted to transmit something with this kind of simple base. And we choose very strange, very weird uh, finishes to transmit also a, a good character of design. And this is probably my second, after the, the play that I designed for Fratelli Guccini, this is the second design that I've done uh, when I came back in Italy. It's a collection about trays. We have the, the part the, the, the part, uh, inside part in the millet wood, and then the haura uh, aureola, I don't know, the, um, this part in, in the meta. Other boxes. So I used to experiment a lot of, a uh, lot of material. And this is, uh, was a lamp that I designed two years ago for Gallotti Radice, and for example, here, um, the, the concept was 
how to how to make a traditional um, lantern, Chinese lantern, and how to make something in a blown glass. So this is hand blown glass, and the diameter is around 50, so it's quite huge. Another lamp that I designed for Migato, and another product, another, another, another mirror, always for Migato, the first year of uh, the art direction. So this was um, a really quick presentation of my work. Uh, they are not all my work, but I want to um, I want to focus. I want to transmit you something about the different kind of stuff of my work. So I hope you enjoy uh, this presentation, and also I hope you understand something. Sorry for my English is not super perfect. I'm so sorry, and I want to thank you everybody. I'm super happy to introduce you on um, the future of the um, interior design and then the next lesson because uh, I think we we will we will do a very good job together and I'm super curious to see your words also. Um, I don't know if you, if someone has some question. Or <laughs> thank you, Federica. While we are waiting for the questions, uh, I would like to underline one thing that you said that really impressed me. You said about the project that uh, everybody was happy because uh, the project was able to represent you and at the same time to represent the company. So I think this is a, a, a truly uh, important and at the same time unusual uh, uh, goal for uh, to keep in mind always when 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 you project something. So not all, the, not all the projects are <laughs> like that. When, when you said that thing and I saw the project and I say like, yeah she's right this is really the perfect balance and it's it's a, a matter of balance maybe sometimes. Uh, always yes. is, is that. I use the audio. Just you call you close. Sorry, uh, yeah, sorry, sorry. My mistake, my fault. I'm not the most technological person here for sure. And um, okay, so then uh, let's see you again for the next webinar. And uh, thank you, everybody. And uh, if you have questions in the meanwhile, uh, we are here and we can uh, reply to every doubt uh, at the same meet at the next meeting. Thank you. Bye bye. Have a good day. Thank you, guys. Thank Bye. you. Yeah, thank you, Federica. Bye.